transition to subsection 3.2. Subsection 3.2 is now the stress vector on an arbitrary cross section. I was mentioning this before, but actually I was choosing the three Cartesian directions. So now the question is, what is the stress vector if you choose any of the other directions? And we assume we know the three Cartesian directions, stress components, stress vector components already, as described in the previous slide. So we have these nine numbers. OK, and the question is now, take the cube. The dashed lines are the remainders of the cube and slice through the cube. OK, and then you have a triangular cut and the triangular cut is a new area which was not there before in the previous slide. I go back once. So there was no triangle here. We slice through the cube. That means we see the backside of the cube and the cut in front of us. So the triangle is the cut in front of us and it has a normal unit vector pointing outside of the plane. Outside of this new plane not necessarily perpendicular outside of the of the screen plane. It is the normal vector is related to the triangle. OK, and P is the stress vector on this new cut. So we know the stress vectors on the other three, on the back, on the right and on the bottom. OK, and what is the stress vector on the new cut? Points are referred to as A, B, C. That ABC defines the triangle and ABC allows you to calculate the normal vector. You remember? You remember the outer product. If you have a vector AB and the vector BC, the cross product of it will be perpendicular to both vectors. So the cross product of AB and BC will give you a vector which is parallel to N and then you calculate the norm divided out and then you have the normal unit vector. This will be needed in some of the exercises. This will be practiced in some of the exercises. OK, so this is the cut. Now, what can we do with this? Uh, we know that there should be force equilibrium on a body. If there is not force equilibrium, the body would either deform or move. We assume here that this body, this cube, was in mechanical equilibrium, neither deformation, not, neither motion. And that means we know that the body should have force equilibrium and the force equilibrium must be true in any inner point also. OK, so we are looking at this point now and we can use force equilibrium to calculate this unknown stress components of P. OK, so the force equilibrium is written like this. P1 times an area, stress 1, 1 times an area stress 2 1 times an area and stress 3 1 times an area and actually you have to recognize that the stress vector is force divided by this area p1 is the area abc okay so p1 is the force on this area divided by the area so <laughs> this is force 1 this is the force on the front front end sigma 1 1 is the right back end of the cube. OK, and delta APBC is the triangle which belongs to that end. OK, so this is the force on the right back end. Sigma 2, 1 corresponds to the force on the two surface, and it's the one direction force. So that is this small element here. OK, and sigma 3, 1 corresponds to the three phase and it's this area uh, this vector okay so we are using the correct vectors which are all pointing in the one direction so this one is pointing in one direction this one is pointing in one direction this one is pointing in one direction and the p1 index means it's also pointing in the one direction so we are summing up all the forces which are all pointing in the one direction and they must be zero OK, this is force equilibrium for one component of the force in the one direction only, not in all direction. We are not yet that far. OK, now, since delta ABC is the one which we know and we want to know P1, we divide the whole equation by A delta ABC, sorry, by delta A ABC. OK, 
that comes on the denominator. And this is the geometry exercise. I mean, on a whiteboard or blackboard, I would sketch this graphically for you. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, so I cannot do this. Do this. So this is a, if you cannot visualize this three-dimensional projection uh, in your mind, just try to play around yourself with pen and paper a, a bit to get it. So x1, x2, x3 is the coordinate system. This is our triangle cut, and uh, n is pointing outside of the plane. So we rotate this tetraedron, tetraedron such that we are looking perpendicularly on the triangle PCD. Okay, so PCD. N is then pointing to the right in the screen plane. Okay, and from geometry, we know that the angle alpha 3 must be equal to the angle alpha 3 uh, in both of these triangles. Okay, there's a right angle, there's a small angle, there's a large angle, and these angles must be similar here. Okay, and one of the things which we wanted to know was the uh, the ratio between these lines here. Okay, why why did we want to know this? Because this is this is a ratio of areas, and the ratio of areas can be brought back to the ratio of length of lines. And uh, by doing such a turn and then projection and then looking at similarity principles from geometry, uh, we can calculate uh, the area. Okay, now the area of the front surface is A, B times the length D, C divided by 2. This is basic geometry. And uh, the ratio, which we are calculating here, this one and this one, we can do similar arguments. And then at the end of the day, we get something like for this example here, the area of the triangle PDAB and the area of the triangle CDAB. Okay, so CD, CDAB, this two things here together with one half of the area of the front triangle, the top thing is PDAB. So PD, AB. This is the bottom triangle area. Okay, so this is one of the possibilities. And uh, PD over CD actually is designated by the cosine of this angle here. Basic geometry. Okay, and if you accept that, then actually this is also designated by the N3 component of the normal unit vector to this plane. So the, the component here, the dashed line, is actually that what we have here at what we have started with here. And in order to make this true, uh, we have used the norm of the unit vector equal to one. OK, and this one you have to in principle do for all the areas out of. Uh, I will not do this in detail for all the areas, but this is something. This is basic geometry. Maybe you need pen and paper to to believe me, but this is something you can practice at home. OK, now, when you do this for all the areas, then for all these three area ratios, you get the N1, the N2, and the N3 component of the of the normal unit vector. And uh, those are uh, expressed as cosines. So this is also something which you should recognize in future, because in, for the rotation matrix, this is needed again and again. OK, so one unit vector, the angle to the normal vector, cosine of the angle between these two unit vectors, this actually is n1, because the one unit vector is a very simple one. It's 1, 0, 0 in Cartesian system. The, this one is very simple, and this one is very simple. So the inner product of these two vectors gives us n2. The inner product of these two vectors gives us n3. OK, so you will see this in many of the examples that this is just happening. OK, and now finally, uh, what do we do with it? Or how do we come to an end? So the force equilibrium written like this, as in the previous slide, can now be rewritten using the normal unit vectors. Okay, so the areas, the area ratios, are now replaced by the unit vector components, n1, n2, n3. Okay, this is what the force equilibrium says. And the force equilibrium actually can now be written in summation convention 
in index notation with the summation over j implied in a shorter form. And that gives us the equilibrium in the i direction. OK, and i can be one, or one two or three. OK, and this is the general form now. Stress vector on the left hand side, which is the stress on stress vector on this area, on this cut with normal unit vector n. So this stress vector we can get from the tensor with the nine components by multiplying a normal unit vector onto the stress vector, uh, stress tensor. Ah, I'm confusing. Okay, so we get the stress vector by multiplying the stress tensor components to the normal unit vector. Okay, and this is implying the summation over J. So we have an object tensor of order two, we have a tensor of order one by summation by the inner product by so-called projection, uh, we get from a tensor and another vector, we get a vector. Okay, this is something, this is index counting. We have three indices here. Two of them are dummy, so one free index on the right-hand side. So there must be one free index also on the left-hand side. Okay, and this thing is called the Cauchy formula. You have to be able to recognize when this occurs in a question. Sometimes the questions will be phrased slightly differently. Sometimes it will be as clear as I started. What is the stress vector on a cut with normal unit vector? OK, so if you have a stress tensor, if you have the normal unit vector, you just have to know how to calculate this. Sometimes in some of the examples, it will be phrased differently. OK, and this is all the same again in the different ways of, of writing it. So nothing new here. Note that the stress tensor is actually symmetric, so that it's equal to its transposed in mechanical equilibrium for normal materials. Uh, so, but that one I will prove later. You, I have not shown this yet. This is just something which will come come back later again. Okay. So 